Welcome to Sandwich Seniority. I'm your host, Robbie Haig, and today I have a guest, uh, Russell Illis, who uh, you will, before the program is over, you will be knowing who Mr. Grandpa and the Magic Hat is. <laughs> Russell, welcome to uh, Sandwich well, thank Seniority. You for having me. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> would you like to give a little background on yourself so we'll get an idea of who Russell is? Well, I'm the father of a child who's had cancer six times over the last 33 years. Wow. Um, and I've been in search of answers to why I act the way I act over the course of time. And the only way I've been able to pull that off is in hindsight and go back and and understand, you know, this set of circumstances happened, and this is how I acted or reacted, and mostly it was reacted, mm -hmm. um, and, and how to change that now in, in today's uh, reality, if you will. Right. Um, and when you, you, when you and I were talking uh, earlier, you had mentioned that you didn't feel you acted or reacted well when this all happened. <laughs> No, that's so, true. Yeah. It's um, scary. It's at 30 years old, I had no skills on coping with this. Right. 33 years ago, we didn't have this information glut, you know, right. of World Wide Web and mm -hmm. uh, what I knew then, what I had heard about cancer at that time was, number one, you get cancer, you're dead six months. Right. And if they opened you up surgically and exposed it to air, mm -hmm. they sewed you up, sent you home, and cut the time in half. Right. So when they said to me, your child has cancer, automatic thought was wow. dead six months. And Horrid. L logic left the room. Right. And, and I don't think I ever recovered from that yeah. over, the, over that period of time. Mm -hmm. um, we got her healthy. We got her moving. Mm -hmm. um, and she's up and doing wonderfully well right now. Good. Matter of fact, she's probably, her and her sister are probably the strongest people that I know. It's like oh, they're wonderful. connected at the hip, and you wonderful. do something bad to either one of them, and they're all over you. <laughs> Excellent. So well, yeah. and you're half of the person, the people who have done that for them. So the yeah. um, so you um, were a very unhappy man, of course, when you heard all of this. Did you give yourself time to grieve, or no? Uh, no, no, there was no time for that. Threw mm -hmm. yourself into work. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, the first thing I did was make sure that everybody got where they needed to be for doctor's appointments, projects, whatever right. needed to happen. And yeah. then I just threw myself at work. I worked seven days a week wow. um, because I couldn't handle it emotionally. Mm -hmm. you know, and unfortunately, that's the male part in this yeah. under normal circumstances. Yeah. You know, and men, I do believe, uh, I've heard. <laughs> Uh, are here to make everything happen nicely. All the bad stuff should go away. Yeah, and if you can't and fix are, it, what do you do? Yeah, exactly, what do you do? Yeah. And, and I couldn't wrap my head around that because being dad, you're supposed to make things that go bump in the night go away, right. and there wasn't a thing I could do. I couldn't fix it, change it, or alter its course. Right. So I just kind of put everybody in the bus behind me and started pulling forward. If we can keep moving forward, we can get by this. and. Right. That was naive on my part, but it's the only way I could cope and survive. Well, with it. It, it actually didn't turn out to be naive. Uh, well, she's still here after thirty years, and so yeah. But and you're trying to go forward. <laughs> yes, we are, and it's 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 different. And and I think that I've what has happened is as I've looked at this over thirty years, as I've you know I've kind of developed a comfort level in myself. Mm -hmm. And I know that when I'm giving back, I'm enriched beyond what I'm giving by far. Right. Um, and as I told you earlier, I've worked, I'm just trying to understand how I'm gonna feel should something happen. <clears throat> I worked, uh, I volunteered hospice for eight years. Mm -hmm. I worked with kids with uh, cancer and kids whose parents have cancer. So that it's just, it's, I've been around it, I've been blessed, and people, I'm jumping all around here, bear with me. That's okay. Um, my friends call me either blessed or cursed, there's no in-between. Um, 
for some reason, I've been given the ability to be with people who are ill or dying and, and create comfort for them. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> the kids seem to be uh, you know, relatively peaceful and calm around me. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've, I've come up with this idea. I'm going to start a company called Mr. Grandpa mm -hmm. and the Magic Hat. Now, the hat has half the magic, but the kid has to apply, supply the other half of the magic in order for it to work. And if you don't believe in magic, don't even wear the hat because it ain't going to work. Very good. So you have them wear the hat. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's very and, good. And if they believe in, them, they believe in magic, they get to put all their fear up in the hat, take out whatever courage they need to get through their next appointment or the next procedure. Very good. And... The, so you've been dealing with hospitals then. You've been talking to hospitals about uh, your program? Not yet. <clears throat> Not yeah. the Mr. Grandpa part of it yet. The first thing I did was I tried to start a men's group for fathers of chronically ill kids. Okay. Now, last March I started at the Westwood Library and I put flyers out to all the hospitals through the social work department to give to the fathers. and to invite them out of the city to come someplace neutral to come and just, just talk, you know, the, what works, what doesn't work, you know, and, and I had a bunch of experience and I can certainly tell you the things that don't work. Sure. <laughs> so let's figure out what does. So you were in communication with the hospital. Oh, absolutely, so. yes, yes. That's very good. And yeah. you, you found that there was no such program. I have searched the entire country. Right. I've had very intelligent people who know more than I searched the country. Mm -hmm. And what we found was in 2002, uh, it was a hospital or a university, teaching university, started a men's group, and they found how wonderful it was when men were put in a, a safe place, how they opened up and were able to speak about what's going on. Right. After they figured out how they start, were able to talk about it, they stopped it. Oh. You know, like four months. Oh. And then another... The only other thing that I was able to find was in the uh, oncology magazine, two nurses in 2004 brought up the subject of the dads needed help, and it never went any further either. So your attempt uh, uh, to get these uh, dads together was sending the leaflets to the hospital. Through the hospital, right, where yeah. the dads okay. are. Mm -hmm. um, and they probably uh, are having a great deal of difficulty getting out of their grief. Very possibly, very possibly. Right. Um, I know how I'm, I'm in an uphill battle trying to get guys to sit down and talk about, you know, how they're doing. I commend yeah. you for that. That's well, wonderful. I'm okay with it. I'm pretty rugged and stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Um, and, and I think what I'm going to do now is on my web page, I'll start a, um, either a chat room or a blog or something mm -hmm. for dads, kids, and moms, and then I'll monitor the dads and start putting it out that way. And hopefully uh, in, in anonymity, they will be able to sit down and speak. You know, and so write. you do have a web page. It's coming. Yep. It's coming? Yeah. Okay. Um, Would you like to say it so that we can put it on the screen or, or email um, or whatever, how we can get in touch with you? Well. You can get in touch with me with my current email, which is ssur1 at verizon.net, um, and I can give you the other information when it's available. Excellent. I just don't have it available to no, me right now. No, that's perfectly fine. We can, we can work <coughs> on that. Oh, yeah. We just want to get the word out there and let people know that uh, there's someone who cares and wants to share the caring. I can go with that. <laughs> okay. It sounds good to me, too. Yeah. So um, you were working, or you were trying to work with fathers, yes. and uh, you uh, have you had any background for this type of work that you were doing? Um, I've been in a men's group for 22 years. I started in, um, and been a participant for 22 years. Good. Uh, but it's around another topic, other okay. topics. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a, this one I want for dads, specifically, you know, of, of, of sick children. Yeah. <clears throat> and you uh, are now going to be working with the children, so yes. you yeah. have a pretty good idea of how you want to go about doing Absolutely. that. Absolutely. You know, I've, I'm 
I can do the work of you know the dads or the kids. Mm -hmm. My my stumbling point is putting a business together around <laughs> it. Like when I started, I thought my skill level was here, and it was really over here. You've learned a great deal. I've had to plug in some big holes to yeah. you know get it going. So, but I'm close. I'm uh, about ready to launch some things that uh, that'll put me in motion. So, mm -hmm. it's coming slowly but surely. I'm just trying it. to get the word out. Is Sure. You know, is, is uh, what I'm trying to do here. What is this magical hat? Do you have a hat? I have a copy of it on of an artist rendition. I have not found anybody to make some hats for me yet. Very good. And I may have to go to either South Vietnam, China, or <laughs> somewhere I to get it made. Not. Well, I've, I I've we, tried we, every American hat company. Really? And they no longer do, other than, spe you know, they don't do specialty hats. They okay. just do you know, formal or, right. or whatever, Yeah. you know. So well, I'm, somebody, somebody somewhere is going to be able to figure it out. Well, as maybe. soon as I, I, what I found is <laughs> I get going and I get all tensed up and uh -huh. I say, oh, that's it, I quit. All right, <laughs> somebody will walk in and say, oh, I know how to do that, let me show you. Where were you 10 minutes ago? That's right. <laughs> but, well, you know, and that's the whole idea of uh, going on the uh, net and yeah. You never can tell who you're gonna, who's going to find you out there and yeah. contact you, and yeah, it's, it's, it could be a wonderful thing. I've met some pretty, pretty wonderful people already. You know that, um, as I, I don't know if I told you or not, but everybody that I've spoken to about this loves it, absolutely, yeah. hands down, except my family. Oh, they haven't worked through the pain about it yet. Okay. You know, so they're still going through pain after thirty uh, years. They just they just prefer to ignore it. Okay, don't bring it up. Don't talk about it. Don't refill it. So, yeah. uh, how can I be angry with them for that? No, you know, no. This is, but it's still you know you're working twice as hard at getting this going. That's it. You know, but right. Oh well. It's always nice to, nice to have someone behind you. Uh, it is. Yeah. yeah. And then so, I imagine sometime they'll come around, I hope. Oh, I'm sure they will. Yeah. Sure. When they start seeing uh, active participation, you know, right. that uh, things are happening. So, <coughs> excuse me. So how is your daughter doing with this? I'm, oh, better uh, than me. <laughs> 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 you know, she has a big job and uh, she has uh, her own company as well on the side. Okay. And she rescues puppies. And really? She's the best auntie ever. <laughs> Is so. she married? Nope. Nope. But she, she's the best auntie ever. Yep. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, you'd think they were her kids. <laughs> Isn't that something? Yep. Very good. That's that's so. great. So what can we do for you to get the word out to Well, I think just let's you know, I think we're, what we're doing is is helpful. It's it's talking about it, it's bringing it out into the light. Mm -hmm. Uh and trying to make a safe place, you know, for it to be spoken of right. without, um, there's, there's just a lot of tough feelings around it, you know? Of course. And, and I, I, I'm a little upset with my father's generation because they're World War II folks mm -hmm. and they came home and they saw some pretty horrific stuff and they chose never to speak of it. Yeah. And they passed that along to the rest of us. Of course. And that's coming back to bite us right now. Yeah. You know, that uh, what we need is to speak freely about all the things. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I see some changes, like my son-in-law, he's, he's changing and he's pretty active in, in, in you know, in, into uh, parenting. Mm -hmm. um, but there's still a lot of guys out there that buy into the you know, don't talk, don't feel. You know, I think we're changing a bit, though. I, I truly do. Um, more men are able to shed some tears. Um, yeah, I agree with you that uh, back in the, the parents' generation, it was the stiff upper lip. And yeah, just keep moving. You don't talk about it, it'll go away, you know. Yeah. But yeah. no, it's not. Communication is a wonderful, wonderful thing. It's very freeing, actually, you know, yes. if you're able to, to just release it, right. you know, so. I'm in agreement with that. So what are you doing uh, regarding the children's group? What, how have you begun Currently, that? I am 
forming the cor- the nonprofit, which is a, lear- a learning language, a whole new language all by itself. Sure, and a lot of paperwork. <clears throat> no, oh my God, <laughs> I can do the work, but I can't do the setup. You know, <laughs> it's like. Um, I, I'm, I've written a book on how the magic got into the hat. That's out being illustrated, and I've got to oh, get that published. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. And then I got to get the business, the uh, nonprofit, up and functioning. And then I got to get, I have to get the hat manufactured. So I got to figure out a way, you know. Okay. So. So are you planning? Do you have a group of children that you're planning point, to work not, with? At this point, I do not. You've talked with Children's Hospital, though. You've been there. I have spoken with a nurse who's been there for 30 years. Okay. And she assures me that there's, this will get accepted one way or another. Oh, I think um, it's a wonderful idea. <clears throat> it, it's, it is a wonderful idea, but you have to go through the bureaucracy of, right. Absolutely. You know, of what's going on at that facility, whichever yeah. it is. But I think that this is going to be a, such an idea that, that it'll come and grow legs and it's just going to run on its own. Oh, sure. You know, uh, people line up to, to work on and to help. And, and so that's, that's what I'm excited about. That's what Very keeps good. me going. Mm-hmm. I'm 63 years old and I've never been this alive in my entire life. Isn't that wonderful? It is just an amazing thing. I mean, Isn't I woke up at that? quarter or two this morning yes. thinking about what's going to happen today and I've not gone, you know. Excellent. And it just, it just builds on so itself. So you may, may not have been ready for this when it happened, but you've been building towards this for a long time. Right. And, and Isn't I, it I've, amazing how this sort of thing happens, though? Talk about one door closing and yeah, another. a window opening or something. Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> in the process of my coming to understand what's really, what we're really facing, I tried to find out how many children in New England have cancer. 21 or under, how many? Yeah. Figure's not available. Really? It's, uh, it's they, they couch it in a 2% of 50,000. Doesn't sound bad. Yeah. Okay. That wasn't a good enough answer. No. So I finally, I've called everybody I could think to call and followed up where they said to call and got nowhere. So I finally called the CDC and I said, I want to know how many kids in New England. Well, the answer back was, well, we don't do just that. I said, well, then tell me about it in the whole U.S. In your way, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so when they finally get back to me after a longer period of time than usual, um, they gave me the, f- the figures for one year, which was 2007, mm. and there were 14,265 kids, 21 or under, diagnosed with cancer that year. Wow. And that's 39 a day. Wow. That's, that isn't, that's amazing. That is phenomenally yeah. huge. Um, that's a lot of dads out there who are hurting. Not, we're not minimizing the fact of uh, mothers hurting. Oh, but, absolutely. And, but but there are you, programs for mothers all over the place. Okay. There's, there's programs for uh, grandparents, siblings, cousins, aunts, uncles, neighbors, mm. but there's nothing for dads. Wow. All right? And, yeah. and I'm, I don't understand that. All right? The divorce rate of fathers with sick kids is in the 80 to 85 percent range. Wow. That's huge. That is Even huge. if you just tell them what not to do. Right. If we could just change one or two in that area, yes, you know, agreed. It, it's it's a huge success. Mm-hmm. Um, the feeling of isolation must be phenomenal. Oh, it's it's you know, it, I have yet to this day sat down across from a, like this and talked to another dad whose child has a chronic illness. Right. Doesn't matter. Anything. Yes, you're not going just with uh, oh, no, no, cancer. No. It's it's, but that's what I'm comfortable. That's what I of know. Of course. Yeah. Sure. Um, any any chronic illness doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Um, I had something going there. My mind went blank. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that happens often. Oh, I know. You're not alone. <laughs> you're not alone with many things. But this this sounds 
surreal that you're doing it this. And, yeah, and, and, and of course, doing it alone, it's a very difficult thing. There's many different avenues to take. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure own. I've made mistakes because I can't keep up with everything. But people are going to be getting ready to step up and start helping, and, mm -hmm. and that, that problem will solve, too. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited. Um, things are Wonderful. moving forward, and... You know, I can't, I'm just hanging on, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. it's wonderful. But just <coughs> wanting to do something like this, well, I trying to do it with the fathers and now stepping up with the children. Yeah. So. Yeah, I guess people ask me why, and mm -hmm. I thought about it a lot. I don't know why. All I know is that I can do this work, therefore I should. Very good. And there are very few strong, positive male voices in the industry. Right. It's all women. Right. And there's nothing bad about that. No. But there's room for, you know. Men like to talk to men, of course. There's got to be, you know, there's got to mm -hmm. be a, a big fill-in here sometime, so... Tell me a little bit about the book that you wrote. Oh, it's just a silly little thing that uh, it just explains how the magic came to uh, Mr. Gramper and the, how the magic got into the hat. And uh, it's, you know, people say, you wrote a book. Well, it's not like a Harry Potter or something <laughs> real. No, I mean, it's going to be a little bit of a... you put it down on paper, and, yeah, and that's and, a difficult thing to do. And, and I ended up, I had reams and reams of paper and I finally got aggravated with that and I gave it to a friend's mom and she deciphered my junk <laughs> and put it down good. into a very good so and, and it's it's I, I'm proud of it you know that excellent um, you know that that it came from me that you put it on paper it's it's You've down ventured. it's out there and I'm ready to you know, take the feedback, good, bad, or indifferent. Very good. You know, sure, you could have gone on for another another 30 years without uh, <laughs> saying doing. or doing anything. Yeah. But you're stepping up to the plate. Yeah, that's... It's, I hadn't thought of it like that, but yeah, you're right. You know, I'm willing to do the hard things, right. you know? And people often ask, you know, well, why do you do that? Because I can. And you've you know. acquired a lot of knowledge. In the 30 to, to, yeah, years. over 30 years. I mean, you, you see, the wisdom comes not in the beginning. It's after you've gone through it and then gone back and looked at it and filtered out all of the emotional stuff that happened and right. tried to see the right, the wrong, the good, the bad. And mm -hmm. so I've been able to do that, or at least partially do that. And, and you, you used a key word going through it. You can't go around this sort no, of thing. You, you must go through it. Yeah. And it's amazing what you learn in the process, isn't it? Uh, yeah, that's why I'm green. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've earned every one every of them. Every one of them. <laughs> I love it. And um, the children will benefit from it. Absolutely. Or, or, or I'm hopeful, yes. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. There's, you, know, I mean, you know, the nurse person that you talked with, I'm sure she has seen and, and heard. Oh, in 30 years, yeah. Yeah, yeah. right. She's and seen it pretty much all. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking anyway. Sure. <coughs> and um, hopefully it will be up and running faster I'm than shooting, fast. I'm shooting to be functional by springtime. Very good. That's my goal. And I've just... If I can hold up. <laughs> well, you have a very kind demeanor, and I, I'm sure that's something that you've learned in your um, your uh, programs that you've been going to. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's what I learned the most was how important it is for me to speak my yes. truth. Very good. You know, mm -hmm. and... You don't have to agree with it. Just listen to it. That's oh, of all. course, you know? sure. And, and the fact I that didn't you mean try you per se, but you know, people. Right. Yeah. Well, obviously, yeah. I wanted to listen to it and <laughs> wanted to have other people listen to it. Yeah. 
but um, you know, to when you get uh, fathers out there, which I wish they would come forward so that you could yes. do that also. You know, i give them my phone number if that's okay. Right, I of would, course. I would talk to them off, you know, just on the, um, i just give it to you now or? Sure, give the, yeah, they'll uh, put my it. My number is 617-827-0225. And I'm willing to talk to any dad that just needs a conversation or, you know, we can just uh, become friends first if, right. if that's what you need, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, I know firsthand how difficult it is to go through it by yourself, right. you know. I mean, in the beginning, people didn't know what to say, so they just turned around and walked out of our lives. That's right. And they never have come back. Ever. Isn't that amazing? It's now, did you spend a lot of time at home after this happened? Oh, God, no. No. Me personally, no. Yeah. I, had, I threw myself at work. I couldn't handle the emotional part of this. Yeah. I stuck that to my wife, you know, I mean. Right. And I say that quite literally because yeah. I just, I can't do that. You do it, you yeah. know, when I didn't give her an option, yeah. which is not, that's not fair. You wouldn't do that today? Uh, no, and I've apologized to her many times for, yeah. you know, the things that I did or didn't do. Um, <clears throat> that was just something that I couldn't handle, uh, I, you know, uh, you'd be emotional, but uh, no, that's not, not safe, yeah. you know. It gives you a, a little more insight into what other fathers are thinking. Oh, absolutely, thinking. absolutely, you know, they're, where do you learn that it's okay for you to talk? Right. You know. That, uh, sure, we're still trying to tell men they can cry. Yeah, you know, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible. Yes. But this is such a, a pressure cooker, you know. I mean, that's, that's your child. Right. You know, and you can't fix it. Yeah. Uh, that eats at you. It's like, well, for 25 years, it felt like I was hollow, you know. Sure. Just like uh, there was nothing there. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and I was not physically or emotionally available to either of my children as they were growing up mm -hmm. and, or to my wife actually, mm -hmm. you know, as they were going, as we were going through this, I was doing what I could to survive, keep the family going, right. house over there, you know, roof over their head, clothes and food and whatever, right. yeah. but they it, needed more, you right. know, and mm -hmm. it was not fair of my- Well, it's a lesson that's better learned yep. at some point, you know, some of us never get the message. But it's a, it's a well-learned lesson. And I'm going to add to this program my thought for the week. Oh, okay. And for you, <laughs> in the presence of trouble, some people grow wings. Others buy crutches. <laughs> it's time for you to kick your crutches out oh, and use long your time. wings. <laughs> very, very good. It's wonderful. It's so good to have you come on the oh, show. I appreciate your time. And, Let and me. talk about this very, very heavy topic. Thank you for being here with us at Sandwich Seniority. It's always our pleasure to have you tuning in, and we hope to see you again very soon.